Hello, brothers and sisters. Father Tony here. It's Easter weekend. I'm on my first camping trip of the season and uh, thought I would uh, take some time here to share a couple of vlogs with you. I've been thinking a lot about secrecy lately, and secrecy plays an important role in a lot of religious traditions and other esoteric spiritualities and other uh, orders and things like that. I'll talk a little bit about how secrecy can play a role in a Gnostic spiritual practice in a minute, but first let's talk about a couple of definitions. First let's talk about the difference between secrecy, privacy, and mystery. Secrecy is for something where you only want one or two people to know about it, or a small group of people to know about it. Uh, privacy is something that people probably know about it, but you don't want people to experience it. And a mystery is something, is a term of art that the, uh, the church uses to describe the unknown things that happen during a liturgical practice. And so all of these three things are related, uh, but not necessarily the same thing. To quote Cory Doctorow, it's not a secret what I do in the bathroom, but it is private because I don't want other people there while I do it. There's been a lot of talk lately about secrecy when it comes to uh, the NSA in the United States and uh, other organizations, government organizations worldwide, who have uh, been collecting information on, on their citizens in order to uh, deter crime, uh, stop terrorism, things like that. Right on this side. But all three of these concepts have an important role to play in uh, spirituality as well. So you have secrecy that exists in your secret societies, your um, esoteric orders, things like that. There's a lot of overlap between Gnosticism and a lot of esoteric orders, and uh, we've talked about a lot of those things on videos on this channel in the past. So go back and check those out if you're interested. In the Martinist tradition, for example, we take oaths of secrecy that we don't talk about what we experience during the ceremony, and we don't talk about the other people involved, and there's a number of reasons for this. One reason for this is your friends and family might not understand what you're doing and they might think you're weird for doing it. This was a mistake. Okay. You are weird for doing it, but you know, you are kind of weird and so you can hang out with us. But uh, another reason is that other people's friends and family might think that they're weird for doing it, so you don't want to talk about the other people in the organization in public. You know, just in case you might get somebody in trouble. Uh, it's still possible, although unlikely, that somebody could be uh, in trouble, get fired from work, or something like that for, for some kind of uh, for participation in an esoteric organization that some might deem is uh, satanic, whatever that might mean. There's a quote I like from Dion Fortune that I can never remember verbatim, and somebody in the comments will inevitably uh, supply it for me, but it says something to the effect that the real secrets of uh, an initiatory esoteric order can't be told from one person to another. Uh, the, real, the real secrets are experienced internally by the act of uh, of participating in the ritual or the initiation, which in my mind that kind of lends itself more towards my definition of privacy than secrecy. Where was I? <sighs> I should write this stuff down. The unfortunate something about secrecy versus privacy. Hmm, I remember. You can find online the rituals of Freemasonry, of Martinism, of the Golden Dawn. I mean, you can buy the Golden Dawn rituals in a book at the bookstore. Therefore, one can make the argument that secrecy, strictly speaking, in the modern esoteric societies is pretty much useless just for that reason. But I don't think that it is. I think that you have a lot of value in the act of secrecy itself as a spiritual practice. And let me talk a little bit about that. I'm taking a bit of a leap now into wild speculation, so please bear with me. Uh, one thing that I've been thinking about lately is in a Gnostic cosmology, there are aeons, archons, the demiurge, the ineffable father, all of these figures, and we've talked about that on this channel. You can see other videos about that. But um, the, the interesting thing that I was thinking about lately is the role that the archons play in kind of the Gnostic cosmic uh, cosmology. <laughs> oh God, well, I'm not qualified to do this. So if we look at the roles of the archons and whether you take them literally or not, uh, the Archons are the rulers of this world, so to speak. So their role is to kind of maintain the status quo. 
uh, through all the processes and paperwork and things that people experience day in and day out that kind of keep people thinking about the mundane, uh, keep, keep people from experiencing the spiritual in their everyday lives. If we look at the Archons in that way, we can try and uh, almost work around them using the tools of secrecy. Now, this is something that I've just been toying with. I don't really have any uh, solid plans or I, this hasn't been developed into a fully-fledged spiritual practice, but, you know, maybe you, can, you and I can have a conversation in the comments about it, about what that might look like. So if we maintain that the Archons are the rulers of the world and that they have their hands in all the stuff that's trying to keep us uh, from reaching our uh, Gnostic potential, then using the tools of secrecy uh, can be a powerful symbolic experience of trying to circumvent those Archonic powers. I'll give you a couple of examples. Oaths of secrecy and uh, having closed sessions, uh, for lack of a better term, of esoteric secret societies uh, can really kind of put you in the frame of mind where you are outside of the control of these archonic forces. And that can be very useful when you're trying to remind yourself in a ritual way that you are supposed to be cultivating this spark of gnosis within you. One stupid idea I've been toying with is to use encryption software when sending messages about spiritual topics. Now there's a whole bunch of options out there. Uh, OpenPGP uh, is one that comes to mind and there's a whole bunch of other ones and some you can do online. Um, there's a new one that I just heard about that's an app for Android, but that's, this isn't a tech show, this is a Gnostic show. So for me, the symbol of using this encryption technology when sending messages that have uh, spiritual uh, content in them, um, you know, it, it would, for me, it would give me the frame of mind that I am bypassing the Archons by transmitting a message that can only be understood between two people in the know, in the Gnostic sense. I'm not trying to say that the Archons are literal, shape-shifting, reptilian, alien, English monarchs who, you know, uh, have it out for us and try actively to, you know, keep us down and the Illuminati and all that wacky stuff. But there are certainly forces that exist in the world that, you know, maintain our kind of mundane status quo. And, you know, whether you call those archons or just the world in general, I think the net result is the same. Those are just a few ideas that I had about uh, using secrecy as a way of reminding yourself about spiritual matters, because that's really all that spiritual practice is, is trying to remind yourself about things that aren't of this world. But I'm curious to hear what you think. Do you think that secrecy is important in spirituality? Uh, do you use secrecy in any way, and how has it affected your spiritual practice? I'd love to hear your comments. At this point, I'm just saying stupid stuff so that I have things to throw in, so, cause, you, know, so you can laugh at me, because I'm a clown, for your entertainment and amusement. Yeah. <sighs>